Green from Kansas City, Florida, light skin one of Coach Hayes. What's up, baby? <laughs> we in the building. We in the building. Football Bill, Caneville, the villains. We in the building. Get in the water. <laughs> <laughs> that been fucked up. All right, man, I want to say Happy New Year's to everybody. Happy New Year's to the villains, man. We finna bring the New Year's in with the light skin wonder, man, Coach Hayes. It's a job. It's a job that nobody really wants. Uh -huh. There's no real upward mobility, meaning so far as, I mean, really till now, there wasn't going to be no national contenders. Right. It's a nice, steady job. Some coaches are complacent. I make a decent salary. I know the area. Right. I know the kids. The, the administration don't give it, you know, they, they cool with what I'm doing. Because you got to remember the level of school. Does that school want to be national contenders or do they just want to compete? Right. And right. I think schools like TCU, Northwestern, they okay with just being competitive. That was because, competitive. Because their true focus is the school, not the athletics. Right. And when you look at Northwestern, they already talk about how hard it is to get in there. Right. So Vanderbilt, the same job. Right. It's the same exact job. Just be competitive. But you get but you get all the Twitter coaches saying, Oh, look at TCU. They didn't bring in a bunch of transfer portal kids. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, they go out there and punch Michigan in the mouth. Punch them in the mouth. Right. And 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 now they headed to the championship and nobody gave them a chance. They was the one team that wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have a shot. Right. Right, right. now they don't have a shot against Georgia. They're all oh, Georgia's going to smoke them. Like, no, sir. But I'm just saying, when, that, when that's what people are yeah. saying right now already yeah. on Twitter. So right, right, right. right, right, right. Well, well, yeah, wait until two weeks. That's what they're saying. It's never good enough until it's good enough. But the thing is, first year coach, right? As everybody say, first year coach. First year coach, how he made it happen. I just feel like every 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 house isn't built the same. Like everything isn't built equally. Everything everybody don't take the same approach. Um, and and a lot of this is back coming back to you and fans. They look at it and be like, oh, he first year coach. They we should be able to. The coach that was there before was there for twenty years, bro. They run the same thing, same system for 20 years. So a new ref, a new refreshing voice comes in. New car smell. Right. Yeah. So maybe Patterson had it. Maybe he had it, but just couldn't push it right. to the next level. New offense, a uh, uh, new voice, and then all of a sudden the players are energized with a system that we knew was decent from before. And, and uh, to say this, I don't know if it, how true this is, but just speculate. Sonny Dykes probably didn't change a lot. He just added to what was already there. Right. So he put another building block on top of what was already being built or had been built for 20 years. Right. Versus coming in with the bulldozer, knocking down what was there. Right. I think if he would have came in there and knocked everything down that Gary Patterson had set up. Right. And tried to start and build his own stuff, he may not be in this situation. Versus looking at what Patterson done for 20 years and build on to it and make it better. Right. You know, enhance it, I guess is the right way to say it. Right, but he enhanced it. <laughs> to, to, to the natty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, he enhanced it. This is my question for y'all in the comment section below, though. If you get two pick sixes in the game, what's the percentage that you win that game? 66%. <laughs> two sixes, 66%. No, that has to raise, that has to raise, you know what I'm saying, the chances of you winning the game. Um, especially when the other team fighting back, they coming back to take the momentum. And shout out to J.J. McCarthy, man. I've been talking about J.J. McCarthy since IMG, dog. He, he, he was one of the, maybe the best, the best IMG quarterback I've seen play other than Kelly Mond. Um, you saw um, in that game how they decided, started running him. He can run the ball. Yeah. And that's the, that's the crazy part about it. Like, they had design runs for him up the middle. Um, he, can actually, he can actually run the ball, uh, and he could throw that thing. Shout out to him, man. He threw for like 300, but them two in the pick sixes is crazy. Pick six hurt him, but he, here's what I be trying to tell fans. The difference maker is on the bench hurt. Blake Corn. Uh huh. He was the difference maker in that game by not playing. Right. As good as Donovan Edwards is, uh -huh. he ain't Blake Corn. Right. Right? And that's what people have to understand that. How important one guy can affect the whole. I guarantee if Blake Corn plays in this game, it look a lot different. You think so? I know so. Yeah. Because look how they played. Look how they played. Even when Blake Corn went out, 
and they fought back and mm-hmm. Michigan fought, they still look like a totally different team. Right. And now, again, you give Son- Sonny Dykes and them guys a little bit of time to prepare. A little bit, wait, three weeks? Yeah, but I'm saying, you get, I'm saying, you get yeah. more time besides, you know, a weekend and, and a couple of weekdays. You got three weeks to really put it in and really um, hone in on what y'all been doing. And you got time to prepare for a guy that's not there now. Dog, you can, you can ask, a, you can solve a lot of what ifs in that situation, man. And that's what difference makers right. do. We saw it last year. What happened when two difference makers went down for Alabama? Right, right. No, no, I get it. Yeah. You. But, do they get it. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm trying to get y'all to understand what difference makers look like. Having bro. them dudes on the field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have, have we gotten to a point where offense can, can basically win games? It, it was always defense win games, and I always thought that I, I don't know how true that was. You know what I'm saying? Have we gotten to a point now to where if you can score points, the other team just has to try to keep up because of the way the rules are, the way everything is. It seemed that way. Uh-huh. But TCU just proved that wrong. How? By putting 14 points up on defense. Well, yeah. I mean. Take 14 points away from them. Right. See what happened. Go to Georgia. Go to Georgia, Ohio State, right? Uh-huh. Their defense, believe it or not, stepped up where Georgia was down, but they were never out because of how defense was playing. They look, Ohio State in that game, from the optics, was whooping them. Yeah. But they never put them away right. because of how defense was playing. Right? right. Now, when it comes to it, what happens? Defense won the game. Like, it could have been how a How you say the defense won the game? In, in the Georgia game? Yeah. Bro, they made the stops when they needed to. Again, the game is geared towards offense now. The way pass interferences are, right. that kind of stuff. Like, to me, I think that changes the game a lot. But, again, I know it's about money. You want people to score. Right. But at the end of the day, though, Street, defense got to play. Defense and running the football win games. And that was weird yesterday because a lot of teams got ran on yesterday that supposed to have good run defenses. Like Georgia. Um, yeah, but I think that's just coaching, man. I, I think I think that's coaching. Um, uh, I don't know, dog. I, I think that it has gotten to a point where offense controls games. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're saying a situation where defense made plays. Defense win game. Yeah. Offense control. They, they game. basically control the the way the the way that the, the the rules are and the way they call the games. You know what I'm saying? It's almost as if you could run a score. True. And if you're Miami, you can't score. You walk into a game versus a Middle Tennessee that if they get the running, the, you can't catch them because the way the, the way that the game is, is is played today. Um. And I guess the flip side of what you're saying is. If the defense would have still tough, you could have won the dang old game. Like, so I get where you're coming from. That's a merry-go-round conversation yeah, yeah. we have. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, last man with the pin and win. But, you know, you're 100% right. The right. way the game is, you're not going to see 14, 21 games anymore. Right. Even against bad opponents. Right. You know, people are going to score, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you're, you're 100% right. But I just think at the end of the – me, I guess, being a defensive guy, me personally. That's what the, that's what the issue is. That's up what there, the huh? issue is. <laughs> he he want to see points. I want to see, I want to see points being stopped, but uh, that's what it's but now, nah, but now nah, you you you're 100 percent right when it comes to that, man. It's just it's unfortunate that the game is being played that way because you see the defensive guys are scared to attack the ball. Yeah, we saw that in that Tennessee game. Right, he had interception, but he was so timid he don't want to run into the guy, get a targeted call. Like right, they almost flipped that thing over in Georgia. Was it Georgia? Yeah. But targeting at the vet. No, was, no, no. That was TCU. the end of TCU game, wasn't it? Bro, they about to flip this game over <laughs> for a targeting call, dog. And the Michigan fans swear to swear to God, they didn't care how they got it. They just wanted it, dog. They so just... guess what? Y'all won that game because they didn't call targeting. <laughs> That's what Michigan fans gonna be saying for now on. Hey, they they wanted they 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 swear to God there was a targeting call. I mean, it's gotten bad, man. We we talked to uh we actually talked to Cam Kitchens, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And asked him, is it hard to tackle? Is it hard to tackle in today's college football? Do you think about it? You know what I'm saying? Is it difficult to tackle in in, in college football now? Are you thinking about it? Because it's it's. I I don't really think about it too much. I just try to 